What's up, dudes? Gonna do another episode today, talking about mainly tadpoles, some eggs, um, what I do, and you know my, the whole process of basically from egg to tadpole. You know, I'll show you my setup uh, and pretty much go through everything, show you what I feed, what kind of water I use. Um, the whole setup. So, I don't get too many questions on it, but, you know, I do have a, a lot of success with the, the froglets that do morph out. They morph out really large. Um, and so this is specifically for Dendrobates tinctorius. Um, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm sure it works with pretty much all Dendrobates. Aratus. I know it works for Leucomelis as well. Um, now I'm not sure about, you know, Aranitomea or Phyllobates. I know it doesn't work for uh, Ufwaga. So, um, if you guys aren't aware, Ufwaga, they raise their own. And that's, you can raise them, but you need to basically have another female Ufwaga that's laying eggs, and the eggs you're using specifically to feed the tadpole of whatever species. Like some people do it, you know, say they just have a ton of bastimentos and they're not too worried about uh, having excess of them and they don't have a lot of Solarte. And the Solarte parents aren't very good parents. You know, maybe they just lay tons of eggs and they don't end up taking care of tadpoles. So what you can do is you can pull their tadpoles, raise them by yourself, but you need to use Another females, uh, you know, you can use the basties if they just lay tons of eggs. You can use the basties eggs to feed your uh, Solarte. So that's an option you can do. I don't do that. It's a lot of work, and all my frogs seem to do a fine job of raising their own tadpoles, even the Histrionica as well. Um, sometimes, you know, I've had Histrionica that it's not so pretty. You know, they. Some of the froglets come out, you know, with metabolic bone disease or, you know, uh, spindly leg syndrome, which is their front arms will be really, really small and they're not strong enough to hold up their weight. And, you know, I don't euthanize them right away. Um, actually, I've never actually euthanized them. I just try, let them get, you know, I give them a chance, but, um, you know, they never seem to make it. So, you know, they'll be in the tank for a few weeks. I see them hopping around with their, you know, they just can't lift their head up and uh, eventually I don't see him anymore so you know what happens but uh, so yeah I guess I'll go over and show you what I've actually got in the tadpole tub you know I raise all mine communally I don't do individual um, the food I use is a little different and uh, yeah it's you know a lot of people I used to do like the deli cups individual raising them um, and that was a pain in the butt and the nightmare froglets came out pretty small um, you know tinctorius should come out pretty large so a lot of mine came out smaller um, then I switched to the tackle box method um, you know in tackle box trays just like there's you know a frog in every three inch by two inch compartment um, or a tadpole I should say on a frog and same thing same results I was using like certain fish flakes um, tadpole bites and stuff like that and it could all be the food I don't know I've never tried the new food I use with individually raising them but the communal raising um, once you get it set up and going it, it's it's so easy um, you know there's no need to really I'll never go back to the single cup you know even if you just got five froglets or five tadpoles or ten tadpoles you know my tubs sometimes I've had up to like 70 80 tadpoles in there um, with no issues but yeah even if you've got five or ten you know you might as well do the communal raise um, with the food that I use like I said this just works for me but you know I suggest it to anybody that's raising tinctorius, aratus, leucomelis um, yeah, I'm not, it may work for galactinatus too I'm not sure but um, yeah anyone who's who's raising those in abundance you know, you'd be silly not to do that. So, uh, let's get into it, and I'll show you what I got going on. And, 
yeah, that's all I'm gonna do today. No, uh, I got a new gimbal, so I'll show you guys how that works. Just to give you a little, little view. And those tanks, nice and smooth panning. It's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so that's my actual tadpole tub. Um, I just got all the supplies out that I really use um, on a daily basis um, for making the food and everything. So first I'll go into the eggs. So obviously tinctorious eggs, you're going to want to pull them. Um, and you know obviously they lay in the petri dish. And so I keep them in these little containers. You know I put a damp paper towel on the bottom just to keep it humid. And then I also do put a lid on it and I also lid the petri dish. So here you can see I have some Qatari. These guys look like they hatched out of the sack a little bit, so I'll leave them in there for about a week um, so they look like regular tadpoles. You can see how they're kind of really bulbous. Um, they shouldn't look like that. So um, before before they go in the tub. Um, here I have some yellowbacks developing. Um, some more yellowbacks underneath and more Qatari underneath. That's all I have right now. I mean, as far as Tinctorious, I only have green sips. Qatari um, and the yellowbacks. That's all I have for Tinctorious now. So um, that's my egg setup. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't have any that are basically ready to go in the tub yet. But uh, let me set that aside. Okay. Um, so this is the food I use it's called Soylent Green Rapashi. And basically what you're going to want to do, uh, I don't know where the directions are, maybe over here, yeah, so there you go, um, you can pause that and read it if you want, but basically, so what I do, you know, you're going to want to use one part of this powder and three parts boiling water. So I use about two tablespoons of this and then obviously six tablespoons of boiling water. And so what I do, this is my little Soylent Green, that's what it looks like. Um, it's a, it becomes like a little uh, gel, basically. Uh, and this is my feeder. I just scoop. One scoop um, in the tadpole tub every day. Um, well, maybe, I'm probably right now about four times a week. I only have uh, maybe 20 tadpoles in there. Um, when you get up to 50, 60, you're going to want to do it once a day. Um, so that's the food. But, and so what I do to make it, you know, I'll put the powder in two tablespoons in that little dish and then I'll get a boiling uh, pot of boiling water and I take, you know, this is a teaspoon, but I'll take my tablespoon, get six, put it into like a glass all at once. You don't want to do one tablespoon at a time with the powder. It's going to make it weird. So you want to take all six you know, of your water servings, the boiling water, put it into a, a, a glass of water all at once, then dump all six at one time into this. Stir it around the fork, um, let it sit, you know, I usually let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, um, then I put the lid on it, and then you have to keep it in the fridge. If you don't keep it in the fridge, it will get moldy, stinky, and gross. So, um, and then after, you know, about an hour in the fridge, it's good to feed. So I'll usually do a feeding, put the lid back on, throw it back in the fridge. Um, so now that we got the food out of the way, that's, I guess, one of the food items. They also eat the uh, India almond leaves, which let me grab here for a sec. These are the India almond leaves. Um, I just get them off of eBay. These are some really little ones, but uh, they were cheap and they work. You know, you don't, these are some bigger ones I have down there. But uh, I always get them off eBay. You know, they're they're pretty cheap. It does. There's all kinds of different grades. Um, doesn't matter what grade you use. They're just tadpole food, so it, it's it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so we got that out of the way. And then you're also gonna want to have some sort of net to catch the tadpoles in the tub. And I also think it's always good to have these little ice cream spoons um, for scooping out tadpoles that are in the petri dish to put in the tub and then you know it's also they're just easy to 
you know, after you have the tadpoles in the morphing cup. Unfortunately, I don't have any that are morphing just yet, so I can't show you that, but I think I've showed that before. I basically take a 32 ounce, you know, culture container, um, put about an inch of water, inch and a half of water in it, and then tilt it on its side. You know, so it's it'll be sitting like this at an angle, and when the frogs are ready to come out of the water, they will climb right up on the side of the cup, and you're good to go. And then you can put them in the frog lip bin, grow out bin, whatever you got. So, yeah, um, that's all. So, so let's get into the tadpole tub itself. And here we have a really boring tadpole tub. Um, nothing exciting to see, but my setup is I've got a sponge filter right there, and this is my air pump. It's really quiet. I set that towel on it on because the, when it sits on the metal, it is a little noisier. So I put that towel to kind of deaden the noise. Um, this is something I'm not sure if everyone knows what this is, but um, methylene blue. I don't even know if they still sell it. I used to use it on tadpoles that were getting moldy. It's good to put on like moldy fish eggs um, or fish eggs that keep molding. Uh, it just basically doesn't let them get moldy. So I haven't used it in years, but I still keep it with the tadpole stuff. Um, okay, so I've got some obviously aquatic plants. I can't remember what these are called. They're really popular, really easy to get. I got them off eBay. Um, and then I have, you know, the India almond leaves everywhere in there. And I use reverse osmosis water. Uh, I have a reverse osmosis system. I got for about 200 bucks and I, everything feeds into a huge trash can downstairs and I just get water. I do water changes maybe every six weeks. Um, and I just do about a, you know, maybe a gallon. I'll take a gallon out of this. And in the, in the dirty water, I will pull the sponge filter in the dirty water bucket and I'll squeeze it out because you don't want to lose that good bacteria. So I'll squeeze it out. Oh, there's a tadpole. See him there? There's a little guy and there's a big guy. Um, there's some more little guys and big guys. You see him over there. Yeah, I use one of these little like tactical flashlights to see in there. But, um, so yeah, I'll squeeze out the, you know, your sponge filter in in the actual dirty bucket and then I'll put fresh clean water in just dump it right in um, yeah it's it's really easy setup and you know so, so I don't know some people may not like that you can't always find all the, the tadpoles but you know you'll see them when they're ready I mean sometimes I'll just leave that lid off when I'm in the frog room all day and uh, just you know check it periodically and you'll see like they start because they're shy at first and then they'll start coming out and um, you know you'll see if they have their front legs popped. If they have the front legs popped, grab your fishnet, scoop them, put them in the cup, and you're good to go. So um, it's a really easy setup, and it's pretty inexpensive. Um, you know you can get these. I got this at Walmart. I want to say it was like 12 bucks. Um, I don't. I think the size is like 20. What is it? I think it's 20. 22 or tw yeah 22 or 24 um, by 13 I think 13 or 15 it's like eight inches tall six inches tall maybe seven I don't know um, it's just you can see it's not very deep um, you know that you could do bigger ones if you want or smaller ones I'm just this is a good size and like I said the most tadpoles I've had in here is about 90 at one point I used to have three tubs set up when I was breeding tons of tinctorious, but now since I've slowed down, um, you know, this is mainly all I've got. Uh, well, actually, it is all I've got. So, um, yeah, like I say, it's super easy, super cheap. The whole setup, I don't remember. I got this off Amazon, the air pump. Um, I got my sponge filters, I think, off Amazon, possibly eBay. Everything's really eBay here. Um, the whole setup, plants, leaves the tub, air filter, uh, or air, air pump, sponge filter, I mean, I'm thinking a maximum of 50 bucks, and, you know, you think about how many frogs you can breed, or how many tadpoles you can rear in here, um, it's kind of a no-brainer, so, yes, they can be done in a single solo cup, 
individually raised with tadpole bites and fish flakes. I just, I've done three different types of rearing tadpoles, and this is by far, um, you know, the, the yielding the biggest. I mean, you know, they're huge. Like these, these don't even have back legs, and that thing's a monster. Um, they morph out really large, and they can take Heidi Eye fruit flies. I'm not kidding. A week after they're they're out of the water, which normally, I mean, the other way, it was a month or a month and a half, two months sometimes before they could even take Heidi Eye. So, yeah, this is just my favorite result. Um, if you're, I don't, if you love taking care of tadpoles individually, by all means, go for it. Um, I did not love it. It was a pain in my butt. I think this is really easy, and, and it, just, it just doesn't bother me. It's effortless. Lift the lid, put a teaspoon of the, the gel, the soylent green in there, and call it a day. You're done. Um, you know, it doesn't get much easier than that. So, without further ado, I think that's going to do it for this video. I uh, hope you guys learned some stuff, and obviously you don't need to do exactly what I do. If you want to take ideas from what I've done, take it with it and run and go for it and make it more elaborate, by all means, go ahead. Um, you know, it, just try it out, and hopefully you guys get as good of results as I do. And, I'll, you know, like I said, I'll try and post a video about every week, um, touching on something with the poison dart frogs and, you know, something with the breeding process or, you know, just basically basic husbandry, it, you know, methods and what I do. So hope you guys enjoy and like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.